All right, let me turn it over to you, John. Okay, <clears throat> well, Happy New Year, everyone. Good to start a new year here. We're gonna start on slide 107. We did that before, but this is gonna be the foundation of a lot of the slides to come tonight. And it's worth reviewing. Uh, the Jews keep their every seven years. We've talked about that, their Sabbath years. And they've kept that <clears throat> since they've come back from the captivity around mid 500 BC. But they've lost track of where the Jubilee is, are and that's really important. The Jubilee is seven times seven. It's 49 years. You celebrate the 50th after the 49th year. 49th year is a Saturday year and you celebrate the Sunday year. But then that's the first of the next count. So it's really a 49 year count. This slide is where I've synced the Jubilees up to. There's a, we don't need the details, but there's some, there's some uh, verses in Jeremiah that give you the clue to when Jubilee is. And it worked all through history. And so I have the testimony of other dates through history plus his to, to be the foundation. So we'll go to slide 108. And this is the last one we did last week. <clears throat> Jesus is born in the Jubilee year. Uh, just counting from Jeremiah. In fact, it's, I believe, 12 Jubilees. It is 12 Jubilees from Jeremiah. And there's a prophecy, I believe, in the book of Baruch in the uh, Apocrypha, where he taught, and it's really obscure. But he talks about there'll be 12 time periods and he has some, you know, uh, elusive word for time periods. But there'll be 12 of them and then the Messiah will come. And so he was talking about 12 Jubilees because Christ is born in a Jubilee year and see, and it's 12 of them. So that's important. Anyway, uh, so that was, that's how we've locked in the Jubilees. Okay, now go to slide 109. Now this is going to be our key to going back to the past. We're gonna work our way all the way back to Adam. And these Jubilees are the way to get it precisely. You can get it pretty close by just following the Bible and doing the years. And you find out the Exodus is around 1400 BC, but scholars, throw that out. And when BYU had their big exhibit on of uh, Ramses, you know, they're doing the 1200 BC stuff. And I, by the way, I believe that's totally wrong for Ramses. He's more like, well, anyway, that's another story, six or 700 BC. The, 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 most people's chronology is just totally lost. It's based on nothing, actually, when you actually look at the foundation. There is a tradition that, well, first of all, the Bible makes it clear that Israel crossed, uh, reading on, sec, on uh, slide 109, Israel crossed the Jordan River on the 10th of Nisan, I mean, that's stated, in a jubilee year on, it turns out if you count that back, well, I'll, here's, I'll give the date, but then the tradition is there were 17 years in the captivity. So you count, uh 17 back from the jeremiah date he's right at the end of the captivity and it brings you to this date saturday the 10th of april 1422 bc the way you know that was a jubilee year that is exactly you might say well wait a minute tra tradition the number could be wrong and not only that they just might mean it was somewhere in that 49 year period which is called a jubilee but it turns out uh, that it is really is the beginning of the Jubilees because when the Lord explains about Jubilees in Leviticus 25, he says, when you cross over into the Jordan, and that's what's gonna happen in this picture, that is what's happening. When you cross over, that's when you start counting the 
seven year cycle. They, there was no seven year cycle known to them. They've been in Egypt, they're just getting out. Well, Egypt and then 40 years in the wilderness. But they didn't know about a seven year cycle. They've been learning the seven day cycle with the manna coming. And that isn't in the Bible before Moses, even though the Lord's been using it all the time. Maybe the ancients knew about it, maybe not. It's just not in the Bible. Now they're going to be introduced to the seven-year cycle, and they're told to start counting the years when they cross over to Jordan. So that is going to be, to be a jubilee year, because remember, the first year is a jubilee, and then the fifth, 50th is, you know, and then the 100th, 49 years later is. So that's the, the jubilee count. And that's huge because now we know exactly to the day when they cross the Jordan River. <clears throat> and now we're going to be able to count back 40 years and we're going to be able to work our way back. So the way my chronology is done is you get these anchor dates. And the Lord provides them in the Bible right to the day. And then you work your way back and fill in the spaces between the anchors. So this is an anchor date. Okay, next slide. <coughs> 110, slide 110. All right, now you count back 40 years. The exodus of the Israelites from Egypt was 40 years before crossing Jordan, and it was on a Passover, which is now called 15 Nisan. In the scriptures, it's called 14 Aviv. Aviv. Anyway, it's the same thing. It's Passover. And that was Thursday, the ninth day of April, 1462 BC. The, uh, the other was 1422 BC. So we've just added 40 years back. So now we're back to the Exodus and we got that date set. And it's, again, it's going to be on, well, this was obviously on Passover. Most people think that's the defi definition of Passover. Uh, to me, it's a an example. The, anyway, it's an example. Let's go back. Let's go on to slide 111. Okay, the Red Sea. Now, part of the story is not in the Bible very clearly, but it's very clear in Jasher. They leave on a Thursday. Uh, that was that day of Passover was Thursday, the ninth. They go into the wilderness for three days, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. It's Sunday morning when the Pharaoh awakes, awakes, meaning, why did I let my slaves go? What was I thinking? That kind of awakes, like, duh, that was stupid. Uh, let's go get them. <clears throat> and they've got a three-day head start, but a bunch of people and cattle and stuff. And the Egyptians have chariots. But that day, I, I don't say it here, I'll say it somewhere, but that's symbolic of Easter. Uh, on the Sunday morning, when the person awakes, that's the resurrection. And Easter is not a holy day on the Hebrew calendar at this time. But at the awakening, you're going to see this later on when, when Alma, well, I don't want to get off on this too much, but I'll just drop the ideas and then you will, it's in papers I've written. And you know what? I don't think it's it's nowhere in these slides uh, yet. I'm just starting on the LDS stuff now. <clears throat> but haven't you noticed there's a strange thing? There's two groups that escape. There's Limhi's and Alma's <clears throat> from the Lamanites in the Book of Mormon. And they're both Passover events. They both happen at Passover. But in both cases, in the one case, in Lim, Limhi's case, they say we'll feed wine to the guards and get them drunk and they go to sleep. And then people run away and then they wake up and chase them. See, it's the same thing. You wake up from sleep and chase. And then you go to uh, Alma's group, which is, you know, I forgot which is first, uh, but it seems like that's Gideon's the one with Limhi. Alma's group, 
I believe is the next is afterward. And <clears throat> they're only three years apart. And you have the same thing. And the Hebrew calendar repeats after about three years. And, and three years later, you got the same thing. And all of a sudden, the Lord, they don't have wine this time. The Lord says, hey, hey, I'll put them to sleep. We got to do the sleep thing. And, and they go to sleep. And Alma's group all sneaks out and leaves. And then guess what? The guards wake up. You know, and can't you see Alma saying, hey, couldn't you just had them sleep a little longer? And, and the Lord says, no, no, this is how we do it. We have them chase you. And he says, when you get to the valley, which was later called the Valley of Alma, he says, keep going. In fact, I think they're almost there when he says this. Get past this valley, and I will stop them at the valley. You never find out what happens, but I bet it's something like the Red Sea where something falls in on them. Or I'd sure like to know the rest of that story. So this is all part of the story. Them waking up is part of it, which I don't believe anybody's noticed before reading the Book of Mormon. Because you don't have a pattern. You can't see two or three of them. And that Sunday is important. Then the next three days uh, brings you to Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. And they get up to the Red Sea. And it's Tuesday night, which is really starting the next day. The uh, wind blows all night. And it's on the day one wind on the sacred round. And it's on one birth on the Venus calendar. This is where the, country, the nation of Israel is really born. It's where it breaks the umbilical cord and breaks the waters. It, the waters break. They go through and they're born. And this is the birthday. Oh, with one birthday, this is two birthdays. The one birthday is the day they leave, the Exodus birthday. But on the Venus calendar, this is the birthday. And it's one birth. And then on the Hebrew calendar, it's the last day of Passover, which is the seventh day. It's a seven-day week. Day number 15 was the first. And Tuesday night was the beginning of 21, the song. It's just six days later, or the seventh day of Passover. So big deal, great symbolism. That's the day of the parting of the Red Sea. OK, next slide, 112. All right, now they give you the exact day when the manna starts. That's huge. It's the 16th of a yard. And they, they tell you that they arrived. It was the day after, the morning after the 15th. And it's a Sunday. And see, this is the first time you see a Sunday. Until now, there's no mention of days of the week. This is their introduction to the Sabbath day. So they are told you can start gathering it for six days. And we won't review all the rules, but basically you gather it for six days, gather twice as much on Friday, the sixth day, and then you're going to rest on the seventh. And if you mess up in these instructions, if you gather too much, it'll rot. Uh, if you try to save it on other days, it'll rot. Uh, anyway, this is an amazing miracle. It comes every six days. This goes on for 40 years. The beginning day of this cycle was, it's only, so far, it's only on one calendar that we've already studied called the priest cycle. It's the beginning day of the priest cycle. It's also some other holy days, but looks like we're not ready to see those yet. So, but anyway, this is the first Sunday that uh, they're going to learn about for 40 years, the rest on the Saturday, on the Sabbath day. Okay, 112. Now we go to when the manna stops. So we have just jumped 40 years. By the way, when you read the book of Exodus, there's five books of Moses. The first one, Genesis, covers the first one third of history from Adam through Joseph. And that, that was, that was the patriarchs. That's the higher priesthood things. That ends, and there's some dark ages. You're in bondage. And then there's another 2,400-year period that takes you up to another dark ages, around uh, 800. They end around 800 with King Alfred in England. He starts bringing back reading and writing and education, and they come out of the dark ages a little bit. 
But there's three main periods of history with dark ages between them. We have now jumped 40 years to when the manna stops. And it stops on the 16th of Nisan, and that's right in the Joshua. He tell, they tell you the exact day. And so it turns out to be a Friday, Friday like uh, when Jesus was crucified Friday. And it turns out it's what we would call Good Friday. Uh, on the priest's calendar, remember it was on the priest's calendar, it started on one chief. Now it's on the day when Jesus was crucified. He was crucified on this day on the priest calendar. This was when I discovered, it was, it was discovered that Good Friday is the real holy day as of being a Friday, not just so many days before Passover or before Easter. It's, well, it'll turn out to be always the Friday before Easter Sunday. But anyway, that's the day. So see, when Jesus comes, here, here it is at the bottom of the slide. It says, Jesus explained that the manna represented him, the bread of heaven, which if eaten at the Lord's Supper would let one live forever. So he's the manna from heaven, and it ends on the day he's crucified on those calendars. So that's, there's just symbolism all over the place with these things. Okay. Next slide, 114. Now we're going to talk about the 40 years and Venus cycles. When we looked at the Venus calendar, we learned that five Venus cycles takes eight years. Turns out 25. You can't do it forever, but you can do it for this long at least. 25 Venus cycles is exactly 40 years. The 40 years began in the wilderness. We just talked about it on one birth at the Red Sea. That was the beginning. The 40 years, okay, we, we were ready for it, just not on that last slide. The 40 years ended on one birth when the manna ceased. So there I have the little bar chart, from one birth to one birth. So it's not from the, when the manna started to when it ceased, it's from when the Red Sea parted is the birth and then the uh, man of ceasing is the end of the 40 year, 40 year period. Okay, we can go a little farther here. Next slide, 115. Now over to, thank you, the next, the 10 commandments. Now we're gonna go back. I, I showed you the beginning and the end of the 40 years. We will look at a few things that happened in between. So now we're back near the beginning of the 40 years again. And we've already done the Exodus was on Passover. First fruits is always seven years, oh, seven years, no, seven weeks after Easter Sunday. So this is going to be seven weeks after the Pharaoh woke up, Sunday the 31st of May, 1862 BC on our Gregorian calendar. And it's first fruits on two calendars. Not only is it eight, eight Sivan, it's just another, like I said, it's always the Sunday, seven Sundays after Easter. So it's somewhere early in Sivan between the what, sixth and the 12th of Sivan, which is just the third month. That's the name they gave it when they're back from the captivity. It's really the Babylonian name. But it's also one barley on the priest calendar which um, is the day for first fruit. First fruits is barley. And that's actually the name of the priestly family that starts that day. And you know, I don't, I, I, back when we were studying the resurrection, see seven weeks before barley is in fact, one arise on the priest calendar. So barley is always seven weeks after arise and they're lined up with the Hebrew calendar this year. So you have two witnesses. By the time we're on the star calendar, we'll have three or four witnesses on the <clears throat> day of the uh, Ten Commandments. But uh, the Hebrew tradition is that the Ten Commandments were given on first fruits. And that's really tough to figure out from the Bible. Uh, 
I, I guess I thought I figured it out by myself. And then I, I, pre, I think I then found out later that it was their tradition. So that was nice. But uh, anyway, so that's the first fruits thing. Okay, 116. Next slide. Now he makes three 40 day trips up the mountain. In the Bible, it sounds like two. Sounds like he goes up and comes down and finds the golden calf and goes back up. But in Jasher, it makes it clear that there's three. And the three, the sacred calendars testify of three also. I don't think I go through, well, I'm not sure if I do or not, so we'll find out. It makes three 40 day trips, and they're actually 40 days. Now we talked about 40 days on the sacred round. And so these four, these trips up the mountain start on one jaguar and it's called a step. And if you go, we're not gonna do it, but if you go back to slide number 43, we're reminded that 40 days after one jaguar is two jaguar. And then 40 days later, which is called a step is three jaguar. So the first time he goes up is on one jaguar. Let's go to 117. Okay, after change to slide 117, after uh, 40 days, he comes down and that's when he finds the golden calf. And it's on the day to Jaguar, which happens to be 24 Tammuz, which is one of <clears throat> what's going to be called a decision day. Uh, this might be the first decision day we've come across, I believe. I, we've talked on the Hebrew calendar, we've talked mostly about the, the big major holy days, but on the Jewish calendar, the regular Jews, you know, know about the real Jewish calendar, they have three weeks in the summer and they don't call them decision days. They, the, this first, no, not this one, the week before this is the first decision day. The 17th of Tammuz is a fast day where they mourn some of the fall of the temple in Jerusalem and things. They, it's a day of mourning. And then they have three weeks that they think about things. And then they have another fast on another day the temple was burned. But as I've looked at this, it, they're clearly decision days because all the big decisions are made on these days. And I believe we talked a little about that. Uh, well, anyway, we'll talk now. So this was <clears throat> where they, again, had to make a decision to choose God. And that's always what the decision is. Are you going to follow God or not? Or some other God? And as you know, a lot of them didn't. And a lot of them were killed on that very day. Let's just go to one more. And then we're going to go to the question time. On the, the next one, on three Jaguar, that was two Jaguar. On Monday in August, three Jaguar, Moses began his third ascent. And this time the Lord said, hey, you broke the tablets. I mean, this is a free translation. You broke the tablets I made for you before. So make your own tablets this way. And then we'll talk about, <clears throat> you know, replacing what's written on them. So he hews his own tablets out. And apparently he does that in a day because there's no time to waste. He comes down for one day and then he goes up the next. So he's now he's taking his tablets up on day 81. And this is in his 81st year. I think that's important somewhere. Let's do the one more slide to 119. And then that'll finish this series. At the end of 120 days, which is the three steps of 40, Moses is transfigured, glowing brightly, on Saturday, the 3rd of October, 1862 BC. And that is back on a major holy day now on the Hebrew calendar, Tabernacles. And on the priest, it's one rewarded. And it's for Jaguar, right? Because we're counting by 40s here. That is symbolic kind of of his whole life. And uh, when we get to the end, I have vacillated back and forth at the end of his life on whether he's translated or not. There's a Mormon tradition that he was translated, and this, this slide would favor be in favor of that, which is that um, 
he glowed brightly, right? On the 120th day of this of his journeys up the hill. That's kind of like being translated. He glowed so bright, they had to put a sheet over him. I mean, he was hurting people's eyes. This is not, you know, that you have to get in a dark room and barely can see a glow. This is like, uh, could you put a hat on, please? So, so anyway, we'll talk about the rest later. Okay, that is a great place to stop. 119, we'll start with 120 next time. <clears throat> so, I don't have, I will look at the chat. I don't have any questions that have been emailed to me. But I will look at Mr. Chat box and it's pretty blank. So if there are questions, Glenn, I'll let you post the, uh, if you turn somebody's audio on for questions or who's thinking what. <clears throat> All right. I have a question initially, John. Okay. With all of the calendars and applying to our day and age, it seems like the Lord with all of these calendars and with all of the patterns that are embedded in these calendars, there are certain events. Um, I'm trying to get a grasp on the different calendars that have those different holy days that pertain to specific patterns. Yeah. And the question I have is, on all of the different calendars that you have been working on, do, does each individual calendar always follow the same pattern? And we know it from how we see the holy days and everything else that, that go on. Do each of the calendars follow a specific pattern um, that can be related to the others? Because there's some aspects of some calendars where there's elements that are just not even noted in others. Right. Do you have something that could help get my grasp on number one, we use certain calendars for certain patterns and others for certain. Is there a way to, to help orient my mind so that I could start grasping the end or the purpose or the promise or the pattern of each, uh, of, of each calendar? Great uh, question there. And I can only partially answer it because I'm learning as I go. <clears throat> but uh, Two parts. One is certain calendars do seem uh, specialized for certain things. The priest calendar is for priesthood events especially. This last event with Moses was a priesthood type event, the transfiguration. It's, it ties into the priesthood and it's on the day one rewarded. And when, uh, when John the Baptist returns to Joseph Smith and gives them the Aaronic priesthood. The day is one priest on the priest calendar. I mean, it's, you know, it's just clearly being used for that. So different calendars have different purposes. And I've said before, I used to say that the main ones for birth were the Hebrew and the sacred round. Now that I'm getting into where I understand the star calendar better, the star one is definitely used for births. I mean, the birth star is exceedingly important. Uh, the, so anyway, one is that calendars have definitely certain uses. Another one is, as you say, some calendars have things like the, the uh, Hebrew calendar has these three decision dates, and so does the star calendar. But there's no decision days on the sacred round at all that I know of. But it's talking about life. It's, it's the cycle of life from birth and death, quickening, all of those cycle of life is the sacred round. Uh, decisions are on this calendar. So the way, what I've seen so far is the different, the Lord can really change it up. And he does it in a way where you can't predict it. By the way, I had a new paper come out today, uh, or yesterday afternoon. And 
it talks about the date of the birth of the kingdom of God. Well, they had this really fantastic they, meaning the Lord setting it up, day that we were all excited about, the 23rd of September, 2017, was the day of the sign fulfilling the book of Revelation of the woman with the sign and all of that. That was holy on 11 different holy days. And the holy days kind of told a story about what it's going to have to do with. Uh, like Tabernacles was one of them, and it's a birth kind of an event and things like that. But the Lord did not want everybody to know uh, when the actual birth was. This was the day it was heralded with trumpets. It's the Feast of Trumpets. Then you announce that, hey, the kingdom of God's going to be born. But you don't tell them the exact day. And it took me this long until last week a year after the event to figure out what was the day. Um, or, you know, in other words, the Lord can hide it from me where who's, he's showing me how to do this stuff, but he didn't want me, I don't believe he wanted me to know either. Anyway, to, to unlock the key of what the story is exactly or what the day is, he can have these calendars where you can know them and still not understand what's going on. So I, I can't give you any keys to really understand everything Glenn, because I, the, the Lord hides it until it's time to, to see it. Yeah, and like last week, what you were saying too is it's not until after it happens that we could see that God was operating according to pattern. But with all of the different calendars, he does follow them. It is very apparent, especially from what you've put together. He does follow the pattern, but we don't necessarily know which calendar yeah. he is orienting to for the next upcoming date that is relevant to what we're doing, but we know after, like you're showing right now with the Exodus and everything else, we know after, and the alignments are beautiful, but we, like you're saying, we don't, we, we can't go and use the calendars to predict the future. Well, this, the, the one, for those that, this will save you reading my paper, but what this paper that came out yesterday is about, is it was the day we took the covenant. Yeah. That was the day of the birth of the kingdom. I'm the guy that stands up and gives a, gives a, a talk on it, and I point to a star, and I said things like, this is the day of the, the birth of the kingdom. Everybody applauded, you know, we did the drum roll, and that's all cool. Then I immediately forgot about that. And I didn't really think it was the real birth because I had it in my mind that the heralding had to be before and you blow the trumpet and then people are ready to look for it. So I looked all year and nothing happened. And then I realized that I had already given a fire sight on it myself. It's so funny. Uh, the point is, when he doesn't want you to know something, even if you're the guy writing a paper on it, you don't know it until it's time. <laughs> And uh, anyway, I read the paper, the, it was time and the paper came out. And also the star was one day off. Uh, and so I only found out the day that slipped in the right star on the right day. I only found out about a month ago. And so it took a month to realize that, wait a minute, that, that's a game changer. <laughs> so anyway, the Lord's security system, I've long, long learned not to try to break that and just to do what he tells me. Yeah. Yep. A day at a time. I'm not doing my agenda. I'm doing his the whole way or I couldn't do anything. Okay, Ash has a question for you in the chat box, John. Yes, she does. According to the sacred calendars, today is <clears throat> today is Saturday or Sunday to be observed as the, for the Sabbath day. Do you believe that each individual has their own birth star? The answer to the second one is, yeah, your birth star is on your birthday. Oh, if you mean an actual star for each, uh, that I don't know. I, I only know there's 360. Here's what it looks like to me now. The 364 men who are represented on the star calendar. I don't have evidence that the day of their birth is, well, yes, I do have a little bit. It's not, I'm not sure how it works. It looks to me like some of the big players have more than one star, and this star is this part of their role, 
and this star is that part of their role. And they might, the big ones might, seven big angels might have seven stars. Um, and that's to be determined. As far as everybody having a star, I've decided the day on which you are born has really something to do with you because it seems to be that in, in every case I've looked at. Which Remember, I've only got the stars and in, in, they're only put in order a couple months ago, the final order. So that's that question. As for the data, that was answered by the Lord in what used to be section, what is still section 59 of the Doctrine and Covenants. <clears throat> that was given on Sunday, the August 7th, in 1831, down in Zion. And he said, and he never says the word Sunday is why people don't understand it. He apparently will not use the Roman names. But he said, on this, the Lord's Day, which is what John the Revelator called it in his book of Revelation, and that's what the name was for the Christians, on this, the Lord's Day, is the day that you should worship, make your offerings, do nothing except prepare your meals simply. <clears throat> the Lord's made it clear that Sunday, <coughs> and the work I've done, what I believe, I believe he was making it simple, saying, hey, Sunday's the day, not Saturday. It's, it was changed at the resurrection. He didn't say that, but that's what happened, I believe. And there's pretty good documentation for that. But I believe the real Sabbath that's even better is Saturday afternoon to Sunday noon. So in my work, I have said it'd be great to hold Sunday meetings before noon because that's the holiest part of Sunday, because it's, it's on the star days and it's on the priest calendar. The priest calendar started at noon on Saturday, went to noon on Sunday, and that was their holy day each week. And see, that's both for Jews, Saturday for Jews, Sunday for Christians. But that was what the Lord said, and that is what's been accepted in the scriptures for the covenant people. So Sunday's the day. Mm, any other questions? Let me think of maybe. If you don't think of one, I might think of one on the cover on the stuff I just covered. Go ahead. Yeah. I hear somebody thinking. Okay, is there any other? Oh yeah, yeah the ones yeah. the ones that start. Well, those. Those start at midday, at noon, it was the priest, and the, the star calendars and the Mars calendars. Okay, but your question, are start at noon. He's asking, is there any other calendar besides ours, is what's implied, the Gregorian that we, we live on, that starts at midnight? Yes, both the Venus and the Mercury start at midnight. And that's because you can see Venus before the sun comes up, as a morning star, and then after it comes up for a while, it's actually bright enough to see in the daytime if you know where to look, when it's in its brightest phases. And so part of these are just practical. Uh, you, you want a Venus day, you don't want it at noon, and you don't want it to start at sunrise or sunset, because it would lap over on the two days. So partly it's just a straight a astronomical, logical thing. But then when you try it, it works. So Venus is, and those are the only two that I can think of. Mercury and Venus are both morning and evening stars, and they start at midnight. And another thing on when they start, and I still have a, a lot of work left to do on this, but all of these are going to turn out to have the year to a day, or the uh, big cycle to the day cycle with them. Uh, so Venus, like it has these nine phases in its 584-day cycle. So you also can count big cycles of Venus, and they're not all the same length, and they're not 364 years. They're all different lengths. For instance, the Savior's life of 33 years He's born in a holy year on the Venus calendar, 
and resurrects in a holy year on the Venus calendar. Um, and so that, that one unit is 33 years, but the next unit is not 33 years. Uh, anyway, so, oh, I'm, uh, you're not knowing why I'm talking about this for this question. It has to do with when the year starts. The, the, see, the calendars that start in the fall, in the evening, like the Hebrew, the Enoch calendar, start at 6 p.m., which is when you're going from the bright part of the day in, and in the transition into the dark, cold part of the day, the night. Well, the names of the Hebrew years go from uh, the autumn. From the first day of autumn is when the year starts because autumn is like going from the hot part of the year to the cold part of the year. So I haven't even done this part yet, but on the Venus and Mercury calendars, I'm almost sure that the year's going to start appropriately as above, so beneath. So the year or their big cycle needs a different word from year. Their big cycle and the little cycles, when you get down to the exact moment of when it starts, are probably going to follow the same pattern. So it's these things of when they, they start, it's really important. Uh, and the Lord really is using these. Uh, you know, I've got too many examples now to think I'm just, it's not just a theory, there's just too much evidence that it's working that way. All right, is there any other? We got a couple of minutes and we're done. Um. <clears throat> I have another with your article, John, um, if someone else doesn't have anything else. But can you comment upon the kingdom of God? Because it, it's a big part of what you explained in your article. And you talked about how synonymous Zion, New Jerusalem, and the kingdom. But in the truest sense of a kingdom doesn't in one aspect of the kingdom mean that we have a prophet among us, an oracle among us, somebody that has the instructions how to ascend or how to get to Zion. Can you make uh, uh, any quick yes. comments on the kingdom? Yes. Uh, there's two phrases used. <clears throat> one is kingdom of God and one is kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven, and they, they seem to be pretty carefully differentiated in the scriptures, in the Bible especially. Uh, the kingdom of heaven tends to be something like the church. Uh, the kingdom of heaven is within you. Um, those kind of phrases, the church, the truth, and the prophet leader. See, the prophet leader is kind of a church thing. Um, and that seems to be all kingdom of heaven. Kingdom of God, when they use it, as such, the way Joseph Smith did, and he's the one I'm quoting in that paper, he's talking about what's in Daniel, and Daniel is not talking about a church. Daniel's talking about a kingdom. Who are the other kingdoms in his dream? It's the Babylonian kingdom, it's the Persian kingdom. These are not churches, these are armies that go and destroy their neighbors and conquer the world, okay? And then there's the Greeks, and then there's the Romans, and the Romans are so rough they grind everybody to power anyway these are this is not the roman church that's taking over the world it's well it's doing it in a different way uh but, but they're talking about the soldiers and the, a kingdom has a king and an army that kind of thing there's going to be a kingdom of god in the millennium that's why i had associated it with joseph smith does the church he founds the church He's the one that explained the vision that the woman is the church and the boy infant that she gives birth to is the kingdom of God. And, <clears throat> and that's the one that will rule the world. It says that's his job. He will, you know, he will rule the world. By the way, one thing I learned in translations, I'll tell you two quickie things and then that's all. <clears throat> when I was looking up this in the Greek, in the English, it says uh, the uh, 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 a man-child will be born who will rule the nations with an iron rod. And we all think, aha, iron rod, word of God. We think of a railing along a, 
a path. When you do the Greek in the better translation, instead of rule, it's shepherd. She, mm. the, the, king, the woman has a son who will shepherd the nations with an iron staff. And you say, oh, wow, whole different picture, you know. So that's interesting. I will tell you the one line that came to me that I believe is in, it just inspired, uh, that I could not change, I couldn't take out. I, I kind of winced. <clears throat> and I couldn't, it's still in there. I can't take it out. But it has such powerful Im image. I was trying to do the sentence, that, and it's this very one you're kind of talking about, where I say, <clears throat> you know, the church is the mother that gives birth to the son, and they are separate entities. And when I got to the place on entity, I had this picture come, and I was shown exactly when that happens, and I had to add these words. They are separate entities after the umbilical cord is severed so that the child, the son, is cut off from the mother church. Those are not my words. And for the first time, we use the word cut off or excommunicated. And... Um, Well, I have written what I have written, and I excuse not myself. Somebody has just made, Russell has just made a comment to the group. <clears throat> it's worth, I'll, I'll read it quick, and then we, we should end. Uh, Joseph Smith tells us um, that, he tells us this, there is a distinction between the Church of God and the Kingdom of God, or Council of 50. Yes, that's what I was doing. That's what I've said. The laws of the Kingdom are not designed to affect our salvation now. It is an entire distinct and separate government. The church is a spiritual matter, a spiritual kingdom. But the kingdom which Daniel saw is not a spiritual kingdom, but he, he has designed, he got it for the safety and salvation of saints by protecting them in the religious rights. Right, so that's what I hopefully was trying to say, and he found the source, a source for that. So what I say in this paper is that it, before you had the Council of 50 in 1842, you had to have a group of people that were trying to be old Zion in 1832. And that's when the sign of the woman was given. And I had missed that, even though I wrote the paper. I just put it in because I didn't understand it. And now and in this paper, I'm realizing it's when you're getting together to be a Zion people. And when did that start? It started when they took the covenant on the 3rd of September, 2017. And it's right on the day of the birth star of the infant. And that's good enough evidence that I published a paper on it. Okay, again, I'm four minutes over, but there you go. So we'll start on 120 next time. Okay. So a reminder to everybody, too. Um, and John, also, there's um, several people that anxiously await the recording to be on Restoration Archives. We had a, a break um, last time. It was down for maintenance, and it took um, about 10 days to get the last ones up. Usually, they're always posted within one or two days after we get done. But everything, just a reminder, all of these recordings are placed on Restoration Archives under regional meetings, and you'll see the John Pratt uh, section that is on Restoration Archives so that you could go and uh, review that. As soon as we get done with the class, I always upload it so that you could always revisit and uh and review the things that uh, we might have not comprehended when it was taught so thank you john and thank you everybody okay. and we'll see you next week thank you.